In this video, we're going to take a look at the recursive DNS name resolution process. The internet has a root. It has a place where all names start. And that is the root DNS servers. For us, the internet tends to be a series of websites based around names like www.yahoo.com. But the way that we find those addresses has to do with the way that the internet is structured. And it all begins with these root DNS servers. There's 13 IP addresses that represent the root DNS servers. If you have a computer that joins the internet and it wants to find any host that exists and it has nowhere to look, it can always look to those root DNS servers to start. Now that's not to say that these 13 IP addresses provide DNS for the whole world. What they actually do is they delegate out control of different pieces of the internet. For example, those root DNS servers are only responsible for telling you where to talk to the next layer, the top level domains. The .net, the .com, the .edu, and so on. If you're looking for, let's say, mail.yahoo.com, the first thing your computer would need to do is talk to one of those 13 root DNS servers. When it talks to that root DNS server, it's not asking where to find mail.yahoo.com. It's only asking where to find the .com DNS server. It only needs to find the next step in the process. So what we do is we start from the very right of that name and we work towards the left. To be most proper, all of these names, these host names on the internet, should be something like mail.yahoo.com dot, where the dot at the end would represent the root. So we ask this root server, where is the DNS server for the dot com domain? Then we connect to that dot com DNS server, and we ask that dot com DNS server where to find the yahoo.com DNS server. It points us to the next IP address in the list, and we connect to this DNS server. And then we ask that yahoo.com DNS server, where would we find the host named mail.yahoo.com? And this host will be able to reply with the answer that we're looking for, the IP address of mail.yahoo.com. So how do we know those 13 root DNS servers? Well, they are commonly known and they're hard-coded into most operating systems. And here's the list. There's a lot of ways to find these. You could even look on Wikipedia and that information is available. But the idea is that if your computer has no idea who to ask and it's a DNS server that needs to resolve some names, it can always ask one of these root DNS servers. The reason this is so excellent is because even as things change on the internet, we could always go back to these guys to find out the answer to where hosts really live. Let's take a look at this. If you open a command prompt in Windows, we can run the nslookup command. nslookup is a program that allows us to send DNS queries directly to our DNS server and it's going to give us the answer that it can. For example, if I wanted to ask my DNS server who is www.google.com, I could get a response for that. And because my DNS server doesn't happen to be the host for google.com, it's a non-authoritative answer. It says, I had to go and ask other people. And it gets this response. Now Google has a lot of different IP addresses. This happens to be the one that was responded to me from Google's DNS server. But what happened behind the scenes to let my server know this answer? That's what we're going to explore today. So instead of asking my server, we're going to all go to the same server in this process so all of the results can be consistent. I'm going to use the command server space 8.8.8.8. I'm going to ask Google's DNS server. If you have no idea what DNS server to use for your client, 8.8.8.8 is an easy one to remember. So now I'm talking to Google's public DNS server. I want to ask that server a question. I want to ask it about the name servers on the internet. So I'm going to set the type of my query to NS 
or name server. I want it to tell me about the DNS name server that exists at dot, just dot, the root of the internet. And it gives me a response. These are the actual names of the root DNS servers on the internet. So if I want to find out one of these addresses, I could simply connect up to one of those servers. I could say server, uh, let's go with uh, e.rootservers.net, which happens to be its host name. And now I'm actually talking to one of the 13 root server IP addresses, 192.203.230.10. All right, and just to be sure, I want to set the type equals ns to make sure that I am looking for name servers. So I'm going to go back to my example here. And I want to ask all the way down to find out how to get to mail.yahoo.com. It is a host, and you can surf to it. And that would actually provide you with Yahoo's email services on a web page. So. I'm talking to the root DNS servers. What do I want to ask them? If I tried to ask them for mail.yahoo.com, it's not going to be able to respond to that. But what it can do is it can tell me about the top level domain servers, the global top level domain servers. Because all it's really going to be able to do is tell me that next level, the .com level. It's similar to asking them the question, tell me about .com, or more appropriately, com dot and it gives that result. There's some IPv6 addresses and all the IPv4 addresses are listed as well. So now I want to talk to one of those. Let's talk to uh, the one that's at C. I'm going to talk to 192.26.92.30. Remember the root servers will only tell me about that next level. The only thing they're responsible for at the root level is this level. The only thing that the .com servers or the global top level domain servers would be responsible for are the second level domains at this level. The ones that you could actually lease from GoDaddy or something like that. So now I'm communicating to one of the global top level domain DNS servers. And I want to ask a question. I want to ask, where is the DNS server for yahoo.com? Uh, just to be sure, I'm going to set type equals ns because I'm asking about a name server. And I'm going to ask about yahoo.com. And by doing that, I'm saying, tell me the DNS server in charge of yahoo.com. Here are the f one, two, three, four, five name servers responsible for the yahoo.com namespace. Let's talk to one of these. I'm going to switch my server now directly to 68.180.131.16. <clears throat> now I'm talking to one of the Yahoo servers. Now I want to ask about one of the hosts that lives on the yahoo.com domain. So instead of setting type to name server, ns, I want to set the type of my query to a an A record, a host record. And I want to ask about mail.yahoo.com. And the results come back. Mail.yahoo.com is actually four different possible hosts. It could be served by any of those. In this case, maybe 68.180.130.15 would be a valid option. And this could be actually where my browser would surf. If I browse to mail.yahoo.com, my DNS server does all of this extra work, asking all of these other servers as needed. And ultimately, it gets back the response, this is the host you can use to talk to mail.yahoo.com right now. Now, this host could change over time, which is why we can always go back to the root server and trickle down this process right here to make our way to the server that we want to talk to. And that's how DNS name resolution works on the internet.